Wherever they are in the world, whatever the situation, every child has the right to access good quality education. These rights are embodied in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, and framed by Sustainable Development Goal 4. Yet this right is denied to more than 260 million children aged 3 to 18 around the world. One third of these, 75 million, due to humanitarian emergencies and protracted crises. Therefore, the only way to achieve this goal, uphold these rights and adhere to humanitarian principles is through the provision of education in emergencies. Emergencies can impact on education directly and indirectly at different levels, the student, the learning environment and the wider education system. Disasters and crises physically harm students, teachers, their families and communities and cause displacement and psychological distress. Schools are damaged or destroyed and education activities and systems disrupted, reducing or stopping access to quality education. In addition to its effect on learning, this also denies children the safe and protective space they desperately need at this difficult time, increasing their exposure to risk and depriving them and their communities of hope for a better future. Education in Emergencies aims to prevent, mitigate or address these risks, losses and destruction in the following ways. Protection. Education in Emergencies aims to physically and psychologically protect children, teachers and communities by providing a safe space free from violence, exploitation and harm. Continuity. Education in Emergencies also aims to ensure continuity of learning and development in order to minimise dropout and safeguard the progress and investment already made. Build back better. Education in Emergencies responses are also windows of opportunity to build back better in every way by improving the quality of education, including the excluded, and building resilience to future emergencies. The components and time frame of an education in emergencies response will vary depending on the type of emergency, the contextual needs and capacities, and available funding. Yet there are some common education in emergencies response components and activities. Firstly, it is essential to secure sufficient, safe learning spaces to continue education. This can be done through holding extra classes in functioning schools or community spaces and by establishing temporary learning spaces in safe locations. Whatever or wherever these learning spaces are, they must be equipped with adequate child and gender sensitive WASH facilities in line with INEE and SPHERE standards. Secondly, sufficient teachers need to be mobilised through the redeployment of existing qualified teachers or by recruiting volunteer teachers, ideally from the affected community. The provision of appropriate teaching and learning materials, including textbooks, is also vital which can be done through direct distribution or by cash transfers if markets are functioning. Once these common components are established, it is important to ensure that the content and activities that children engage with support their well-being, promote meaningful learning and do not reinforce division and conflict. This can involve incorporating new curriculum content and activities which support social and emotional learning, promote literacy and numeracy, and provide health messaging and psychosocial support. In emergencies, all teachers, qualified and volunteer, require support to help them manage their own and their students' well-being. They also require professional development 
to equip them to manage large classes and teach effectively in these challenging conditions. Education in emergencies is most effective when part of an integrated programme which also tackles other non-education reasons for children not going to school. Direct integration involves using education as a platform for activities which support hygiene, health and nutrition. Community participation underpins all stages and components of education in emergencies response in order to ensure that all children in the community are accessing education and to support quality improvements. This requires building on existing assets, generating ownership and developing capacity. This is a key part of building back better local resilience to future shocks. Coordinating with authorities and other response actors is essential to delivering a quality education in emergencies response. This process is led by the Education in Emergencies Working Group for Refugee Situations and the Education Cluster for All Other Emergencies. Collaborative platforms such as these are also opportunities to build national response capacity. Guiding all of these components of education in emergencies and more is the Interagency Network for Education in Emergencies, the sector's minimum standards. At all stages, education in emergencies, like all humanitarian responses, must carefully consider gender, disability, child safeguarding and participation and conflict sensitivity, as well as other cross-cutting issues. This will help ensure that in addition to helping all children survive, thrive and learn, the response also contributes to building back a more inclusive, equitable and peaceful society.